Well, good evening, folks. It's Richard here. It is a hot, hot evening. I'm going to spend a couple hours out here uh, on the Tennessee River to show you one of, if not the most effective way to catch gar that I know of. Okay, to start with, this is uh, just three eighths of um, of an inch, three eighths of an inch, three eighths rope. Um, double braided nylon line that's all it is and uh, what I do let's cut us a piece let's cut this factory part off it's got a piece of tape on the end of it folks now I cut me a length of rope anywhere from four to six inches long let's go six inches that's the first thing that I do the second thing that I do is I'll take a cigarette lighter and right on the very end one end or the other is I'll burn it just like that okay till it gets a mushroom shape on the end of it just like that and in a minute you'll see why I do that the second thing that I do is that I'll take this cigarette lighter and I'll scorch it about anywhere from three quarters of an inch to an inch below that mushroom that I just created. All I'm doing is tightening up that part of it. The third thing I'll do is I'll start unbrailing this line. I just, you just have to work with it like this. There's a lot of different ways. I just use my fingers. There's an outer and an inner part right here. Here's the inner part, and I have to do it the same way. But I'll do that all the way up to the top right here, all the way up to where it's singed. Get out here, you old bee. All right, we're getting there. That's pretty good. The next thing we're going to do is take a simple hairbrush. And let's turn right here and put it on your knee or whatever and give it a good hair combing. This is what's going to catch a gar right here. The better you can separate all them filaments out, the better off you're going to be able to rope the fish in. <laughs> I was fixing to say hook the fish, folks, but there's no hook needed, as y'all can see. I know it looks ignorant, but now you're talking about a very effective way to catch gar. Okay, there we have it. Now, I'm using right here an Aris rod. It's six foot long, light action rod. It's actually a a little crankbait rod that I bought years ago uh, for, for working in tight on rip routes and things of that nature. Pitching a crankbait. And this is a loose speed, speed spool. What I'm using right here. And this is 10 pound test line. That's about all I use. Unless the gar are really, really big. I don't, I don't think we're going to catch any real big ones today. But you're talking about catching some fish now. If you like to eat gar, hey, this is the way to go about it. And then all I'm doing is just tying a, I guess you'd call that a slip knot, but it'll hold them. Nothing fancy. And as far as weight, you need a little bit of weight. And what I use is a little bitty shot. I don't even know what size that is. It's about the size of a BB that you'd shoot in a one-pump daisy BB gun. We'll take her BB or split shot and go up pretty close to where we tied the knot. It, it's nothing specific about this. This is an ignorant looking bait. Anyway, but you talking about catching gar. Let's get it wet. There 
it is. Look at that action. Okay, you don't want it when, when gar are surfacing or real close to the top. Now, the, uh, you don't want it to sink very fast at all, real slow, just like that. And what I'm going to do today is just visually fish for them. I mean, I'm fishing for individuals. I'm going to go along the bank, look for them, and we're going to catch a few gar. Stay with me. That's a pretty good fish right there. Let's see if we can catch him. He come after it that time. Here he is. All right, he's got it. Y'all see that? Now, when he shook his head like that, he messed up. He messed up bad. And I'm just keeping a taut line, not real tight. I'm not wanting to fight him a whole lot till he gets really wrapped up in it. He'll shake his head down there and get wrapped up more and more and more. He's got in a tree there. We got him out. Now this is a pretty good gar here. A lot bigger than the first one. But now he's wrapped up good enough where I'm fighting. He kept what they do when they grab a hold of it, they start shaking their head. And they'll wrap that rope all up in all them teeth they have. And it's over with. That gar will be caught. Look at there. That's a pretty good one there. I thought he was a little bit bigger than that. He's about a 34 inches, maybe. But look what some teeth that thing's got. All right, let's get a net on him. There we go. <laughs> oh, he's more than that. He's three feet. Every bit of it. A lot of fun, folks. All right, folks, let's get our gloves on and see if we can get him off. Now, one this size right here, he's about three feet long. You talking about stout. These are the stoutest fish that I know of. They're a lot stronger than a catfish, uh, in my opinion, and a lot quicker. And they can cut you all to pieces if you don't watch it. So that's why I use a leather glove. Okay. Now you can see, when that fish grabbed the hold of that rope, what happened is he went to shaking. If I, give, I put a little pressure on the fish, just a little, he started shaking his head and that rope got all up in his teeth. All right, we got him loosed. Got all the rope out of his little teethish. And let's let him go. There he goes. Woo! Hey. Whoa. Whoa. Let's catch our another one. On it. There's one right there, folks. Let's see if we can catch him. Yep. He's done caught. When he shook his head that way, he got caught. <laughs> he don't know what's going on. <laughs> and the more he shakes his head, the more he's caught. Now, that's a pretty gar right there. Look how pretty that fish is. Ain't that pretty. Not a very big one. I can't find no big ones. I'm trying my best to catch one as long as my leg. But, uh, all they got to do is run up there, grab it. Once they grab it, put a little tension on the fish, and he'll shake his head, and it's over. I mean, you can catch them up to, I've caught them up to five feet by doing that. But that's a pretty gar. No matter what he does, he can't get loosed. That rope has got him. It's, it's something else. I tell you, it's a lot of fun. Um. Uh, that's the prettiest gar I've seen in a long time. Let's net him. Look at there. Strap it up thing. Put a little water right here. All I had to do was just troll around. I seen him. Throw it in front of him and it was over with. They're a very aggressive, high-tempered fish. But trying to hook them with a hook 
is hard to do. Let's get her gloves on. We'll get him off and release him. That's the tough part of it, is getting all that rope out of his teeth. But if you're a gar eater, what I'd do is just cut the line. Have me several of these ropes right here ready. Every how many gar you want to catch, we'll just fix you some ropes up. All right. Let's open his mouth up and I'll show you. Hey, don't, don't, don't. They're so strong, folks. But look at all those teeth. Them little filaments gets wrapped up all on his nose and his teeth and he's caught. Let's, <laughs> let's let him go. Oh, it tickles me. There he goes. Elmo. He ain't, he can't catch Gar. He don't know how. Right there in front of us, folks. There he comes. Oh, he messed up. Another one. <laughs> it's so easy. So easy. They're not big ones. But I have caught some big ones. I've got to keep saying that. I'm surprised I hadn't seen any big ones. But uh, it is that easy. <laughs> Oh, me. A lot of fun. Uh, hooking them right on the snout like that, they got to be a, a big guard to really give you a, a hard pull. But if you if you hook a real big guard, he'll, he'll pull. What it is is he's hooked right on the end of that snout, and he don't have much leverage to fight. That's what the deal is, right? All right, let's get, get him off. That old thing's is stinking up the boat, flopping in here, old slime everywhere. Let them old stinking things go. All right. Let's let him go. The only drawback to this is it takes me forever, quit, quit, to get the rope out of his mouth. Go on back in there. Whew. You know, this bait right here is appealing in the water. Let me just throw that rope on out there. I want y'all to look at that action. I want y'all to look at that. God, Gar can't stand it. They cannot stand it. There's one right there, folks. I'm going to drop it on his head and see what happens. Look here. I want you to look. <laughs> I dropped it right on his head <clears throat> and got him. And that's a pretty good gar right here. All right, boy. Are you going to quit or, or what? I want you to look at there. They, that Elmer's baby. Elmer is a baby. Okay, woo. I'm gonna put the guard in the, look here. Woo! That's a good one. Look at there, what a fish in there. Elmo! Hey, something ain't right, folks. I don't know what it is, but it ain't bad. It ain't bad. And make sure you're free of all the rope. I know you want to cut me up, but all right, folks, let's let him go. He's battling me, this and this. Let's let him go on back. Go on back. Well, folks, you know, really, to be quite honest with you, if you want to be a professional garman, you got to have a hat like this, a beautiful shirt like this, you know, with stuff on it, and a spinning reel and rod is really a lot better. You make more accurate casts. Um, bait caster is not too good. Now, to practice to be, okay, a professional garment, the best thing to do is make a long cast and reel it real quick. Okay, make another one. Okay, now look. Woo! 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 No! 
Okay, that's a pretty good one right here. I feel some head shakes. <laughs> now this is a big, long nose scar. I mean a good one. Them head shakes is... I can't... Let me... Hey, whoa. Whoa. Huh. I'm hooked up. Good fish right here. Good fish. Okay. Let me... I don't know. This fish right here is pretty good size. Feel some head shakes. Basically, that's the way you practice if you're going to be a Garmin. Okay. Whoa. She was... Yeah!